The book of Matthew 24, we're going to talk about the end of time. But if you flip back to Matthew 23, you have Jesus talking with his disciple about the mountain, uh, sorry, about the temple. And then Jesus said to them and said, you see, I can bring down this temple in three days and I'll build it up. They were all confused because they thought he was talking about the physical uh, mountain. But then he was actually talking about his body. And then straight forward into our Matthew 24, they said, come on, Master, tell us, what would it be the sign of your coming? It was quite a profound question because they were actually expecting him to say, all right, uh, right now I'm going to go right straight and then I'm going to defeat the Roman Empire. I'm going to sit at the top of their government as the head of all system. I'm going to be the king over the Roman Empire and then that will be the establishment of my kingdom. Or, you know, they all thought that, all right, we will have to fight a physical battle and they will have to go from one place to another. Probably Jesus should have or would have provided to them um, a perspective that would have actually told them, you know, we are ready for this. You get people like uh, James, James and John, they have been arguing, man, I want to sit in the right hand side of, uh, right -hand side of Jesus, you know, they are just arguing and all of that because they thought that the physical manifestation of the kingdom of God is going to be Jesus physically sitting in his seat in Jerusalem. But of course, we are going to see that in his second coming. But for now, he spoke some certain things that were actually profound. And then in his words, he says, there will be rumors of war and there will be war. He began to talk about some of those things that are not actually, they were not expecting. Uh, how will your comment be this disastrous? There will be war, rumors of war, there will be hunger, there will be striking, and there will be a lot of things. Why is that? Because he was actually taking them in a journey where he wants their eyes to actually open to a place to tell them that the kingdom of God must reach to every end of things. Then I will come because I am giving you what is called a mission. I am setting you up as a word, an ambassador to the nations of the earth that you'll be able to set a standard for me that I will not come back now until when I see you in your ambassadorial assignment doing it in a far much more greater place where you never thought of then I will come so that the, the concept of Jesus talking to his disciples and saying you know you have I have to see the kingdom in all the earth it says until the message of the kingdom gets to the ends of the earth then the end will come now this is very profound because the reason why we are called believers is because we believe in something there is a conviction in our heart you see the first time you receive jesus to be your lord and your personal savior certain things do not change about you the only thing you that actually change about you is your conviction somehow somehow you got corrupted in your conviction and then you're like ah oh, all right I messed things up, but now I believe in the person that Jesus came, he died, you know, the dead burial and the resurrection of Jesus, you believe it, and then you are not a believer. Something changed about you, it is not your body, it is not your clothes, probably not even your mind, but your conviction, your conviction changed. And then the book of Matthew 24 will have to give us a new perspective. He says, until the kingdom gets to the ends of the earth, then the end will come. What is Jesus saying? Jesus has actually given us an assignment to be able to establish the conviction of Jesus upon the heart of many, upon the heart of multitude, and then he began to stretch it. He said there will be war. See, in time of war, people believe in something. There should be something to give people hope. In terms of uh, a famine, there, was, there should be something to give people hope. In terms of um, in terms of economic downtime, there should be something to give people hope. And that's why the gospel is so, so, so the prophet began to speak in the book of Isaiah. And he says, oh, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the captive. Whoa, the captive needs a good news. You get to preach, sorry, to preach the good news to the poor. The poor needs the good news, good tidings. The poor need to listen to the good news. And then when he began to talk about the poor, it doesn't just mean those who are poor in cash, also those who are poor in spirit. So we have to also understand that the gospel must read to those who are blind and bound by devils and evil spirit, bringing hell manipulation upon the surface of the earth to be able to frustrate the system of mind in which God has called us out for. And also the enemies doing all it can to make sure that it keeps our government in prison. So the book of Mighty 24 says, until the means it gets to the ends of the Earth. What is Jesus coming? Is because you have what is called an assignment. All right. So we are talking about my two. Twenty-four introduction. So my two twenty-four. It's because you have a calling. 
see, the day that you receive Jesus to be your Lord and your pastor and Savior, most of the times people don't talk about it because there is what we call discipleship. You, you go through discipleship, you get trained, you, 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 know, you just find yourself just doing something. But there is something special in which God has called you out for. Because the formation in which God has set before time is that you'll be a person of value. And then Jesus, or rather God began to talk about it in the book of Genesis, he says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue the earth. And this very particular mandate is not just for the male, it is also for both males and females because in the spirit there is no male, there is no female. We are all sons to God. So each and every person, there is a place in which God is calling you out for that you can actually do the business of life and bring forth the spoils upon the platform or upon the place of the cross where people will get to see the mountain that is bigger than every other mountain which is called the mountain of God and the person of Jesus. So what is that thing that you actually believe God is actually you calling you out for? Have you found your purpose? Have you found your place? Have you found your passion? What is that and what can you put together that will help you to produce a content, a product, a uh, 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 um. Uh, uh, is it uh, an intellectual property? What is it do you believe that God has put in your hand for you to be able to do the business of life and bring forth spoils upon the altar of God? So now this is it now. We are all in a struggle because humans, you know, we are kind of complicated. And when we find ourselves, we are on earth, there's a lot of things that we are learning, especially in our educational system. Oh, all right, everybody want to make money, very important. And then Jesus has actually called us to be what is called a government. Now I'm talking about the Ecclesia, which I will actually talk about it much more better in time to come. Now, when you look at the system of the earth, you must understand that there is what is called the Green Reaper, or rather the Soul Reaper, popularly known as the Spirit of Death. Now, now when you talk about the Soul Reaper, it's it's not bad. It's a it's a neutral word because an angel could be a Soul Reaper. These are uh, uh, messenger saints to reap out souls, you know, to take you out of your body, and then in, in that. The Jesus began to say something, he said, the reason why they will not listen is because somehow, somewhere, they are, they are, their mind is dark. You get, they don't respond to the gospel because it's not registered in their mind and it's a sign that they respond to their flesh. Now, when they respond to their flesh, the product is dead. We saw Paul began to talk about this. When you respond to the things of the flesh, that is what happens to you. You die. Or you respond to the things of the spirit, what happens to you? You receive life. And it is in that same uh, a platform that Jesus is calling us for because there is the system of the world is created to respond to what is called flesh. Why? Because in, in, in the book of Genesis 1, we saw, I think, Book of Genesis 2 and 3, we saw all the product, and then we got to a place where man failed, man began to respond to his flesh, man eat what he thought is good for him, you get? And then man shift from the presence of God, which is called Eden, to a place which is, which is not actually conducive for man. Because in the system of God, God didn't actually make provision for man to be able to levitate or rather to leave its place and then to come to heaven. Because man was actually created for earth. Man was created to dominate the earth, to do the works of God, to do that in which God would have done if God was here on earth. So man was given the spirit of God to be able to guide him. And then we saw Adam began to name the animals, began to name, you know, name all manner of stuff, lion, lion, you know, elephant, elephant, and God says, whatever you name them, that's the name thereof. What does it say? It means there was a level of productivity in the spirit in which God has actually poured upon the person of Adam. So we saw that in the proper proportion in the book of Genesis. But now coming back to the fall, we have to deal with what is called the flesh. And the flesh is not the body. You have to understand that when we talk about the flesh, we talk about the senses that come against the principle of God. So now the spirit of death actually walked through this very particular gate. Oh, uh, yeah, let me use flesh senses. Yeah, this is going to be good. All right. So the spirit of death actually walks through this particular gate in order to bring hell, in order to bring manipulation, in order to bring a destruction upon the earth. Now, most of the time when we talk about this, uh, the believer actually talk, oh, all right, most of the result is insane. But I tell you, most of the result of our flesh comes in product. 
it comes in, in, in our creation. It comes in our creativity. It comes in our development. It comes in, in our world, particularly you, right? I, I think I'm just put that and then that's it. Now, they come in this very particular shape. So now the product of the flesh is not just you working against the, the, the principle or the precept of God by just action and character, but also in your productivity. Because we saw it in the book of Genesis when God said, let us make man, that you will be able to govern the system of life upon the earth. Man now works in a direct proportional or enticing that in which God has said. So when God actually said that, we saw it in a different form. So how can we now begin to deal with some of these things? Because what we are we, we are able to do as a church is that we are able to attack the problem of sin that has to do with that, which is in our mind, but not in our creativity. So we talk about it like, all right, you have to be a good person and character. You have to be humble. You have to have good integrity and all of that. You gotta obey God in it. But you know, we don't even talk about our prayer. And these are kind of things in which the enemy is actually using as a platform to bring hell upon the earth. So now the spirit of death or the grim reaper or whatever that may be works upon the system of our senses in order to bring forth hell upon our product, upon our creation, upon our creativity, upon our development, upon our system of the world. And so instead of us having what is called a good government, which is being led by the spirit of God, we are having an anti-Jesus kind of kind, kind of government set upon the earth, set upon nations and countries, set upon companies, set upon um, um, businesses. We have them all around set in spot. So instead of taking the glory back to God, we see men taking the glory. Why? Because of this very particular gate, this very particular door, which is called the door of senses. So we must be able to deal with some of these things because uh, what College of the Jews is actually out here for is to address it, to put it back in order and to train and to release people that will go out and do that in which God has called them to do. So we must understand that, all right, the issue of sin is not just, or rather the issue of our senses and flesh not being submitted to the person of Jesus. It's actually a problem, not just in our character, not just in our, our thought or our integrity, but also in our product, also in our creation, in our creativity, in our development, and in our world. So we must come to a place where we'll be able to put all of these things together. Then we must know the righteous standard of God and begin to put it in proper placement because we know there is something that God is trying to produce. Remember Book of Mighty 24, he said, until the message of the kingdom gets to the ends of the earth, then Jesus, I, I will come. But I'm not going to come back if you guys are not ready. You still get. So now, we must understand, where are the places that, that the message of the kingdom has not actually touched yet? Because if you want to talk about the verbal system of the message of the kingdom, I think one third of the earth has been evangelized, I think 70%. You want to talk about Iraq. They know who Jesus is. You say Jesus, they just don't like him. You get. So somehow, somehow, people have actually heard the message of the gospel. You, 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 but you, like Jesus is the most popular person on earth till today, from 2000 years ago till today. But what, what are the things that are not responding to the person or the personality of Jesus and the system of his government? Our product, our creation, our creativity, our development, our world, our government, our military. These are things that God is working day in, day out to see that you come to the place of your assignment and understanding that, ah, oh, I am called as an ambassador in a place of government. I am called as, a, as an ambassador in a place of military art and combat and sport and entertainment. Until we get to that place, then we must know the level of, of what we are actually called to do to see that Jesus becomes all that it is. Until the message of the kingdom gets to every edifice of the earth, how will you know that the message has gotten to the ends of the earth is when you see the light in every edifice. So what must we do right now? These are the edifices of the earth. We must go into them and preach the gospel.